What's up everyone? Well, you probably already know that water fertilizer and sun is the way that you make bonsai grow quickly. But there's one other thing that seems to make a really big difference, particularly with these junipers. So just to give you an idea of the comparison that I'm making here, these plants, I've got three little ones here that are in two inch, and these guys that are in these approximately one gallon grow bags are from the same cutting batch and they are pretty much exactly the same age. These were grown in the same environment, they were given the same fertilizer, they are in the same soil and they were watered on the same schedule. Now, if they're watered on the same schedule, you might be saying to yourself, well, maybe this needed to be watered more frequently, but it shouldn't be too surprising to you that a plant that is growing in a much larger container, one that is maybe at least 10 times the volume of this, has a has created growth that is maybe 10 times the volume of this in terms of the top growth. Now with junipers, the driving force in terms of the growth of the wood in the trunk is these strong tips and elongations that you see here. These elongations can happen at any size in any size container, but what I've noticed in the last three years is that they happen much faster and in, in, a, in a larger volume. So while this just had maybe one tip last year that was elongating like this, this one had already produced four strong whips like this the prior year. And so this year there's sort of a multiplicative effect and we have you know a dozen strong tips on the tree all running and creating more wood and increasing the rate of metabolism for the plant. All of that goes into the creation of wood in the trunk. And so the trunk on this one is probably about five eighths to three quarters of an inch in diameter, well as the one here is more like a quarter inch in diameter. So I think we've established that container size is really important here. Your average temperature is also really important and full sun is also really important. Beyond that, water and fertilizer are definitely the friend of a juniper. Now that we've got that down, let's jump into a little bit of work on these two plants. If you want more detailed growing advice like this, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want even more, I'm happy to announce that we are pretty soon going to be launching a black pine growing course that will take you from start to finish. I'm really excited about it and I hope that you guys will be too. I haven't done a whole lot of work to these guys that are in the two inch containers. Regardless, I, if I'm gonna pot this up into a larger container to further the speed in terms of the development of the trunk, I, at the same time, wanna do a little bit more work. So I've got one shoot here that has been wired, but I've got one, two, three, four, or more shoots that have not been wired. I'm not thinking too much about the exact pattern of growth that I'm creating here. All I'm really doing is adding some movement to these branches. I don't want to allow the interior growth that is going to be forming in the center of the composition to get shaded out by the stronger growth on the outside, because that means that I'm going to have to cut back all the outside growth and wait for back budding in the interior of the composition. What I'd rather do is to spread out the strong growth and allow sunlight to the interior growth to maintain it in a healthy condition, but we'll see that more in the bigger tree. I have actually already done a little bit of thinning to this and it's been wired twice, maybe three times even. I have also, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of shari work that was done at one point. But the, the key thing that I'm looking at here is that there's a lot of growth that's starting to create enough of a dense mass in this area that it could end up shading out branches that I want to keep. So I'm going to redirect some of that growth using wire. You can see that there's the trunk line starting here and then the main trunk line moves up into here, all having been wired up to about this point. And then this whip that's above that has not been wired yet. So I could potentially have a trunk on here that is six or seven inches with that movement. And then I would only have, if I was going to make a shohin composition, I would only have like an inch or so left for the crown. So I might come back down in here, but regardless, let's 
start by adding a couple more pieces of wire, particularly to these straighter whips that have emerged uh, and that haven't yet been wired. So I've put three wires on there, effectively bending six of the whips down and out to spread this all out and make it so that more light can get down into this section. I don't yet have a, a definitive plan for what this plant is going to look like. It might end up being a taller tree, which is not going to be an issue. And you might be thinking to yourself like, well, you don't have any height. And in reality, it's not gonna be that difficult for me to gain height. All I need to do is wait for one of these guys to turn it into a whip and elongate or something else. And if I got impatient, I could just bend one of these branches back up, assuming that it hasn't created too much wood. Conversely, if I waited and just sort of let everything run up, I would then be shading out the entire interior of the composition. So if I'm going to go for a shoheen size composition, all the foliage is going to be in this section. And that means that these are just sacrifice branches. And so bending them outward so that we can simultaneously use these to create more wood while nurturing a set of branches that are in here is going to save us a lot of time on the back end of the growing process. With all the branches spread out on here, this is not going to work out if I take all nine of these large junipers that I have in this Anderson flat and do the same thing. So what I'm gonna do instead is rejigger the growing configuration of this plant. So what I've done basically is to take four of the nine one gallons that were in the other flat and put them into these three, three gallon grow bags. Now I didn't even take them out of the one gallon grow bags because the roots can go straight through. So all I've done is kind of nestle them down to about the level that the roots were uh, protected before. That's also going to keep them from falling over. This should give them more room both on the bottom and on the top so that they're not fighting with each other while economizing space at the same time. So if you want to get your juniper trunk to be bigger, the takeaway here is that let all the branching get bigger. This is kind of the opposite of what we do in bonsai and so you have to restrain yourself from cutting back all of these branches. Even wiring them is going to slow them down, but wiring is necessary in order to create interesting shapes so that we can actually have, you know, a bonsai that's not just a straight stick. And I would caution you to carefully consider before you remove any of these whips as they're elongating. Each one of them is contributing to the trunk growth. Removing them is slowing down your trunk growth. You need to carefully think about whether or not removing it is advantageous. Once you start cutting all of these back, the tree is going to go into a more distributed growth pattern, which is what we're striving for in bonsai. Now, that's great, except the caveat is that if you didn't let the trunk get big enough, it's going to take a lot, long time to get them going again. In fact, if you get down to just sort of normal tips and rounded out pads on a tree, it can take between three and five years to get one of these runners going, just like it does if you start from a cutting. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time. And good luck growing your universe.